As a little closeted trans girl, I turned on the TV to get answers as to why I felt different. And the first memory I had of trans women were those of psychopaths, people who make you vomit, and that of rejected and abused sex workers. Three memories come to mind. The movie Silence of the Lambs, where a psychotic man kills women because he wants to become them. Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, where a trans woman reveals her genitalia only to be laughed at. And lastly, any times of opera where a man vomits when he realizes he was going to be intimate with a trans woman. If I think about a time during my childhood when the word trans had a positive connotation, I would be here thinking forever. Never have I thought of this word, let alone the people this word describes, as something normal in contrast to the way I felt growing up. Abnormal. I felt in no way I could disclose who I was to anyone because I didn't want to end up on the street because that was what I thought it would mean and still does for many of us. It took me 28 years of lived life and experiences to take the courage to come out. The main problem as to why it took me so long is that the word trans was always whispered or never spoken but hinted at as a taboo or a disease you don't speak of. Because it all comes down to the disinformation, stereotypes, and made-up beliefs caused by the lack of positive and authentic representation of trans identities in media. Seeing positive trans role models on screen could have allowed me to love myself as a young girl. Authentic portrayals are what makes stereotypes disappear. Watching trans people and trans kids be who they truly are on screen can actually save lives. In a moment, I'm going to tell you how seeing positive trans representation helped me be true to myself. But first, let's see how trans representation has changed on TV in recent years and how much change is still needed on the big screen. Growing up, I saw actors wearing trans, being praised for their roles as if being trans is a character to be played. But once the camera stopped rolling, you could put your wig and costume back in the closet where they belong and live your unbothered, privileged life as a non-trans person, a cisgender person. I saw trans sex workers being killed over and over again on shows like CSI, NCIS, and the likes. I saw trans people dying because of their transition. In Dr. House and Grey's Anatomy, trans bodies were rejecting hormones or surgeries. I saw and kept watching trans stories written by cisgender people to amuse cisgender audiences and their expectation of what it means to be trans in their eyes a lesser human being that doesn't deserve to be told on screen in its true form. We don't have to go uh, that far back in time to see this happening. Cinema is still, is still not changing. GLAAD, the American media monitoring organization that works against discrimination of LGBTQ plus people, reports that there were zero films with transgender characters from the major studios in 2019. The last year we have data for. In March this year, in the movie Secret Society, All We Have Is Us, there were two trans black women, both played by cis actresses, packed with transphobic jokes that made cis audiences laugh. Even, even when gender non-conforming characters are included in fictional audiovisual texts, they are indeed still often poorly written, falling into offensive tropes and stereotypes about transgender people, GLAD confirms. But thankfully, things are changing on TV. In the last decade, there has been an increase of authentic and positive portrayals of trans folks in television. Thanks mostly to two tipping points. Um, Laverne Cox on Orange is the New Black and more recently, the show Pose on Netflix. 
having LGBTQ plus representation that doesn't revolve around trauma, tragedy, objectification, abuse, and death is a dream and privilege that the trans and gender non-conforming community is slowly starting to pursue as something that can actually happen. Lately, many shows have switched their approach to trans identities. Finally, treating this category of people as actual human beings. As actual human beings that just are more than their genitals or who they like to have sex with. Trans folks began to have regular lives, at times fun ones too, to have different jobs than what one might have expected, to have monogamous healthy relationships, to have friends and family that love them unconditionally, and, and to be finally seen, written, and performed by trans people as well. Trans and non-binary folks can see themselves portrayed in a way that make us feel, makes us feel appreciated and understood for the very first time outside the tropes of the past. The reason these changes are happening is also because of a few directors reevaluating what they did. I call this phenom phenomenon the Ryan Murphy effect. Since the creator of Nathan Tech and Glee, Ryan Murphy used to portray trans characters, his casting though was shallow and his writing was a stereotypical exploitation of characters, gender, and sexualities. However, he is now one of the most influential people in trans representation, with later seasons of Glee, shows like 911 Lone Star, and of course, Pose. My hope is that more directors follow Ryan Murphy. It's actually already happening in shows like Grey's Anatomy, The Good Doctor, and many others. I wish this change had happened sooner. Positive trans representation could have helped me see myself as beautiful and helped me feel as proud as I am today of being a trans woman. Representation is a key element to show the world who trans people are especially for those who have never met or interacted with one. These are the stories I needed to watch when I was little. These are the stories I wish my family would have watched decades ago. These are the stories that could have made a difference to little trans children and their families today. Stories about hopes and dreams that things can change and are eventually changing. I'm hopeful because I see representation of screen changing, but the pace of it is still slow. How can we speed it up? Well, you and me both have agency in this change. There are many things we as audiences or the audience can do to be part of the solution and not the problem. Boycott shows and movies, write emails to networks, or simply tweet about it. Make our voices heard, even if you're not trans. You can be an ally and show that these stories are not just for us trans people, that you cis people want to see them too. And if you work in the industry, allow trans folks to be the writers and the performers of our own stories. I am Diana. I am a trans woman, and I'm that little closeted trans girl. It turns on the TV, but now she's out and proud. Proud to be who I really am. Proud to live life as my true self. Proud to exist in a world that keeps discriminating people like me. Another reason why it's time we take up spaces that have always been denied to us. We are more than our transition. We're human beings with feelings, hopes, goals. We're friends and enemies. We're main and supporting characters. We're good and evil. We're men, women, and everything in between and beyond. We're trans. We're people.